On this episode of Demoto, we are talking about the first day of work. Yeah, you're gonna be anxious. You don't know anyone. It's awkward. That's okay. I connected with all my coworkers on LinkedIn before the day I started. And that's why you're a freak. The reality is you're gonna size people up. You're gonna judge each other, but that's all gonna change over time. You are a tiny fish in a big pond. Know that. Would you go out and get drunk with your coworkers on the first week of your new job? New hire, day one, clicks a phishing email. Are you freaking kidding me? Hello. Good morning, D gang. Hi, Motorheads. I don't know if it's morning. I don't know if it's afternoon. I don't know if it's night. I don't know when you listen to this. It's all the same to us. Public apology. I wore white last time. Mm -hmm, I wore a white dress and our producer, Talon, has one request for me every week. No white. Two. No white, move your freaking mic down. Get the mic out of your face. Okay, I like to have the mic directly in front of my face and I like to wear white. Yeah, <laughs> you, those are your my, two pastimes. I'm in my bridal era constantly. Yes. I'm ready to get engaged at any moment. I'm always gonna wear white. Could be today, could be tomorrow. Could be, right? And so I- I hope it happens live on the pod. Yeah, <laughs> I am not close to getting engaged. Don't, <laughs> don't worry about her heads, but I wear white all the time. Talon, we finish recording. He's in LA, he's remote. Yep. And we get a text from him in our group text. I had a weird dream that I just woke up to that Natalie was wearing white. Can someone confirm that this was just a nightmare? She was dressed as a beanbag. I was this beanbag. I was in a terry cloth floor length dress. I was <laughs> I was this beanbag. If you're if you're only listening on audio, we are sitting in two white beanbag chairs. Yep. Yep. Our asses are three inches from the ground. We joked that we were going to replace the beanbags. We're like, let's get some cheap beanbags on Amazon and then we'll like upgrade to chairs. Once once this takes off, you know, once we hit episode 40, which, oh, by the way. We're we, here. We're here. We out here. Oh, we're going to upgrade? No chance. No chance. No chance. Our spines are fully, fully fused. The beanbags have this only- This is forever. They, they keep sagging. <laughs> Their pants sag low. <laughs> And they shed. Anytime I wear dark clothing, I walk out with just a bunch of white hair that's stuck That's why to me. I wear white. Sorry, Talon. Sorry. So we're kind of matching today. Today we're talking about starting a new job. But before we get into it. Day one. Let's do a what's good. Can we do a what's good? We got to get back to what's good. You were at Brand Week and I, brand I need week. to say, I saw a video of you on your story of you dancing out to get into your chair. And like, there was nothing I loved more than that video. I was, it was smiling a to myself. It was a choice. I saw you do your little jig up there. Busted out a stanky leg. I mean, you know? that was great. And you didn't stop. You just kept pulling out random moves. I, it was, I was like, I'm going to get on the stage. I'm going to do something because it sounds dead out there. And I just feel like I get so nervous still on stage. We've had a public speaking episode. Make sure to listen to that if you haven't. But like, I'm just, I inch out. I, was, I see videos of myself just like hobbling onto stage and heels that are too high for me. My, my back <laughs> is hunched over. Like I have no swag. That you do was, the awkward like Ellen walk out. Like, yeah, I'm like, two, like finger guns. I'm like, hey. No, that's with, great. I think we overthink it. You were dripping with swag and I was impressed. I made a choice. So I'm wearing a whoop now. Not an ad, but I'm wearing a whoop. Haven't seen it. Um, I oh, kind of keep it hidden under here. You've been covering it up. My natural resting heart rate is something like 60, but then I checked it yesterday right at the exact minute I went on stage, 137. Oh my God. 137. Full sweat. Full sweat. Full sweat. Um, but actually doing the little dance helped me kind of settle in. Yeah. And just yeah. be like, I'm here to make people laugh and smile. Yeah. Like these people are just listening to session after session yes. after session. And they were talking about like, brand safety right before I went on. And I was like, boring, boring losers. <laughs> Let me just come out here and, and hit a stanky leg. You do hit a weird that. little jump. How, how was dust off the shoe? You move. were dust. You were, you were doing a lot <laughs> shopping cart. I, I think don't know I what saw that was about any, any notable brand week moments, tips. Was it, you there were some motorheads there. There, there were okay. some motorheads there, Love which was that. awesome. Um, I was only really there for 24 hours and Ross uh, likes to get in and out. I do. I do love I. a good plane flight. Yeah. Love it. Yep. Um, but it was talking to a bunch of marketers about how to best work with, with creators like us. I'll spare you the details, but you know, gave them some, uh, some harsh love. We'll Love call it that. that. Love that. What about you? What, what's new with you? I saw an Instagram story. This doesn't have to be your what's good. Okay. But I saw some laminated eyebrows. Oh yeah. What is that? What does so, that mean? So I got my eyebrows laminated. Bo, if we want to do a hard cut in on the brows. I mean, I, they look so symmetrical. My and, roommate has a bit with me where she says, Natalie, please run things by me before you do it. Cause yeah. I'll see a TikTok. I sprinted to the nearest lamination machine. med spa lamination machine and I got it done. 
I don't even know what it is. I laid down and I literally said, what are we doing today? Right. And basically you get your eyebrows like straightened. I have really curly hair. So my eyebrows are kind of like wiry and curly. So I got them. <laughs> Never noticed that, but okay. I got them slicked up. And do I like the look? No. Am I wedded to it? No. Do I'm already I, used to it. Do I wish I ran it by a couple people? Maybe. Like, so wait, what do they do? Is it like a paintbrush? Do they put plastic on you and then yes. burn it? Like they what? put like some liquid on it, some slime in the brows and yeah. then they put a piece of plastic over it. And I just lay there and I'm like, is burning normal? <laughs> yeah. And she's like, totally. Totally. And then after an hour of her, by the way, I, I got a one way ticket to Yap Town. She was, there was nothing relaxing about this. How long are you sitting there? 40 minutes, 30, 20? 45. How long oh was, God. how much was she talking? 45. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And on my way out, 46. You got a nice life story. Oh my gosh. And we went to this peaceful bungalow in the back. I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't wait. Like, yeah, they have music, like peaceful music playing. Peaceful music. And I'm just, yep, Shauna's yep, yep, just yep, running yep, her yep, mouth. Yep, yep, yep. I could not. Thanks, Shauna. No rest for the, I, my eyes were open. And I was I was looking at photos and videos on her phone. I was just like, <laughs> what is happening? So yeah, if any of you motorheads have some, some tips on eyebrow lamination, maintenance. Beauty hurts, I've heard. I get a lot of stuff done. It hurts. I'll try anything once. Yeah, that's fair. Also, I don't. Can you talk about it yet? Yes. You've got a, a kind of a huge thing coming up. We've teased it a few times, but I feel we've like we it. like we got to be close to launch. So we got to give it to the motorheads. Give it to them. A few months ago, I was going down to LA back and forth. We referenced it. I kind of was teasing it. Big things coming. It was a project. Big shit popping. It's I was, about to pop. I was on a production set and I was filming a show. A real show. A TV show. A TV show on Roku called The Charlie Puth Show. You ever heard of him? I don't know if you've heard of Charlie Puth. Uh, I had no idea what he looked like, but I've heard of him. You turn me on like a light switch. <laughs> there Whatever. you go. A lot Whatever. of songs. Um, has sung with Wiz Khalifa. He, Taylor just, Swift loves him. Taylor Swift said Charlie Puth will be a bigger artist. That happened after we recorded the show. That was a lie, but- Production team was still. like, oh my God, I yep. can't believe this happened. Anyway, I played Charlie's momager. Uh, I was in a Kris Jenner wig. You'll say, see in the trailer. Say more momager, like you're his, you're his actual boss. I'm his manager, but the whole bit is like, it's an unscripted reality show where he's like, I needed to hire a momager. Andrea Swift, Tish Cyrus, all these like right, moms. So you're his talent manager. His like talent he, like manager. he's playing himself, right? He's like, playing himself and I'm his manager and his his best friend, Mike, is kind of the boy, voice of reason in the show. Okay. And Mike's like, I don't even think you are a mom. Who are you? I'm like, okay, thank you. Great questions. Right. Next, like, please yeah. moving on. And the really cool experience about this show was it was completely unscripted. So there were, we would go into a scene. There's no worries about memorizing lines, which I which is great. really struggle with. Right. And you just go in and you improv. And I was with some great comedians, the, the, the name, cast. Just like you may not have acted with all of them, but just like name drop some of the big names in the show. Will Ferrell, yep. uh, John Legend, yep. Courtney Cox, Rosie O'Donnell, Dr. Phil. Even Rosie's in it. <laughs> there are some insane names. I'm trying to think like all the real housewives yeah. Charlie's like FaceTiming with, Sarah Silverman. It's like very meta, right? Cause he's, he's like trying to, what? not revitalize, but like boost his career. And he's yes. talking with Roku executives, like John Mayer's Roku's self-aware about yeah, Roku's, trying to make this show. It's like Roku is tasking him with doing a reality show. They have a big project for him. I won't, right. I won't say it, but, and so the whole show he's working towards accomplishing this, this project. It's kind of like Dave vibes, like from yes. like Lil Dicky, kind of like it's meta, it's about him. He stars in it, but there's like a lot it, yeah. of cast. There's a lot of like Roku him. references. Yeah, like yeah. I'm like, you got to make a jingle about a Roku product. Right. Sorry, right. they're on my ass, right. whatever. So yeah. it's it's very, it, it was so fun to do. Really funny, it turned When's out. It, drop? it drops it drop? October 4th. When does this drop? October 4th. This might be out. Okay. Like so right this, after. So it might be out. So go watch it. Roku. Go watch it on Roku. Um, super excited. Sweet. And Ross and I will be acting on a big screen near Congratulations. you. Congratulations. <laughs> uh, I'm not in it, but I will be acting a fool near one that she's on. <laughs> so that's um, sick. Let's talk about- starting jobs. What was your first job experience? I mean, I guess I could go back to internships, but I will say like my first true job was, I was a leasing agent. So real estate at a luxury apartment building in Oakland. Okay. Paradox in and of itself, downtown Oakland, totally. luxury, but no one had lived in it. It was freshly built. A lot of war Golden State Warriors folks were there. And I was the guy who was wearing a suit. I worked every day except for Tuesday, Wednesdays were my day off. So I was working on the weekends, 10 to seven. Can I just say the people I don't trust real estate agents? I was one of two leasing agents. There was a, a property manager there and I would basically tour people around. I had all the same jokes. There was like an art installation. There was a yoga room and I would just hit 
hammer the same jokes on my tour. Totally. Can you re remember I, I a honestly, joke? I can't even remember the joke. Is it like so as if ago. I'd want an indoor pool that's 50 yards long? Yeah, like, like, just, like exactly. Like, you know, after a nice long day, you come back to the Pilates machine and you're just like legs up and out, legs up and out. <laughs> I know. It's like, I know I'm doing it like after you guys all go to sleep. I've been there. <laughs> like, yeah. That's weird. Okay. Do you live here? Yeah. 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 But I was kind of baptism by fire in my first, like all I wanted to do was like rock my suit and just like look sick, look sick and get shit done. Did you get commish? I did. Every single time I would, I would knock one out. I would get commish. We sold the building up so fast. They hooked it up with like a huge bonus at the end. It was like one of the fastest they've ever leased up a property. That's and your boy sweet. was just, uh, your boy's got clean it up. You are just a feeder to Oakland, downtown Oakland. I, I You're know. getting people to move, relocate. This is the classic. People be like, is it safe? And you, you cannot guarantee safety. Yeah. Like that's illegal. So they'll send in fake tour, like people who want to take tours to try and get you. They'll be like, so who lives here? And I can't tell you demographics of people who live there. Like that's a fair housing yep. violation. And same with like guaranteeing safety, you know? And I'd be like, there's, you know, we got like security cameras. We got fobs. We have a, a night guard here every night. Yep. You know, we've had no incidents. So those are things yeah, you're, you're dancing like, around. I'm it. dancing around yeah. super hard. I'm like, but we are also like 60% of the San Francisco price. No one's so, ever lived in this room before. Up to you. Again, Pilates. Yeah. We got Pilates. Want? We do happy hours on Thursdays in the art installation. You know? You want these amenities or not? Yeah, exactly. You can't get a building like this in the city. It wouldn't fit. Exactly. And like, I, I think similar to you, I was, I was such a try hard. Yeah. Early on. All I want to do is like impress my boss and just get it done. So you know, it what happens when the building fills up? Do you move to another building? Or yep, you, they you, transfer you. Did like, you pivot out to a new role? So or? I, I ended up pivoting out. I actually like, that's when I switched to go play baseball. I was like trying to yeah. try out for the baseball team and, and I ended up making the team. But it was very different than, for example, joining Glassdoor. I went to Glassdoor. It's my first time in a startup. I'm used to being corporate bro from Oracle because I went from Oracle to, to Glassdoor. And everybody's a new hire class. So there's about 20 of us. And everyone's in sales. Like you're always looking around like, Who's a beast? Like who's actually good? Who's sold before? Who's closed? Who's top of the leaderboard? Six figure deals on the reg. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Line from sales or yeah. dope. Watch it if you haven't. <laughs> who's bloodthirsty deal savage? Um, but this is where I met Travis. The only two guys who dressed corporate on day one at a startup were me and a guy whose name is actually Tyler, but who became Travis in a lot of my uh, content bits. Because we we're looking at each other. It was like, fuck this guy. Fuck this guy. We're going to be boys. You know, I hate you, but I love you. I hate you, but I love you. Cause we're going to be the same. And you know, we slowly started wearing you know, hoodies and we started startup a fine ourselves. See, you seeped into startup life. But in quickly. sales, it's like, who's going to close the first deal? Like that's a huge part of your reputation. And both of us really struggled to get our first deal in the door. And once we got the deal in the first one, in, it was like, then the floodgates open. It was all good, but you're stressing. Cause you see other people like finding deals, you, getting you, lucky. You're wishing then, ill will upon your peers. 100%. Kind of, yeah. It's like, you know, I don't want them to be hurt, but I don't want them to be better than me. Totally. You know? So like, Sales is a little different where it's just, it's so results oriented. The first day is awkward. First okay. day of school, like there's always anxiety. So yeah. your first day is in sales. You're sizing people up. Sizing people up. You've always been, you've been a sales savage. You've had a quota before. Yep. You're wondering who's, are most of them fresh out of college? Who are in your peers? In our class, no. A lot of them had come from other sales roles. Because Glassdoor is a big deal. Yeah. You At the have time, it's like experience. startups. Yeah. You need some experience to jump in there. They weren't bringing in like, unless you're a BDR or some SDR. Okay. So you have the sales role. I kind of came into it in the consulting yeah, so like side of it. You had like, because you were out of school, so they had this whole university concept. Well, right. So I, yeah, I wasn't out of school. I was at Deloitte University. Well, right, but that came after like you interned with them. But like that's I interned, but I'm yeah, thinking yeah. of my first day on the job. They send every new hire to Deloitte University, yeah. this campus in Westlake, Texas, that they built out. That so everyone around the world, or is it like the U.S. U.S. All US the U.S. new place. hires. If you have a certain start date, you go in this wave. Yeah. I, I just actually flew into Dallas, Fort Worth, and. I saw the DF dub, the Deloitte, like they're, they're called the green daughters and they're wearing oh, no. lime green. And they're like, they have a hat on and they're like Deloitte shuttle this way. And you just are, you just everyone shuffled in, in. Yeah. Everyone's sweating. It's a hundred degrees. Anyway, they send you to this place. There's a barn where you drink, like you go after, after work, you're in this insane, like it takes you 20 minutes to walk from one end to the other. It's my, a mile long. And <sighs> Everything is free. You walk up to the Starbucks, free Starbucks. That's you grab nice. it. Wow. Okay. Food. Sick. There's all these different like snack shops and you just grab, they're trying to butter you up so hard. They're trying it's to tell hurt you, a lot. you're going to be working 80 hours a it's week. It's going to hurt a lot. Yeah. On client site, <laughs> flying to the middle of Missouri. So don't get too comfortable here because yeah. we'll only show you this when you make partner again. What are you feeling though first day? 
like walking in? So first day we're in consulting and we're doing basically a mock case and you're you're in these teams of five. And of course the personalities start to come out immediately. So I'm- They're the picked for you, these teams. These teams are picked for you, yeah. randomly assigned, you're at your table. And I'm of course the try hard. I, I interned before, so I know how to make a deck. I got right. access to the Deloitte Icon Library. Right. Like I know how this shit works. Right, right, right. There's, you know, Braden or Brandon or whatever name you can yeah. think of for the douchey class clown white dude who is probably you, honestly. Could have been. Who treats the whole thing like a joke. And I'm like, you know what, Brayden? I'm going to build the deck and I'll present it. I'll give you the agenda slide. I'll take the A if you want to do the work. I know you're a little hungover from the barn last <laughs> night, but I'm here to work. Yeah, yeah, literally. I'm here to make a career. Yeah, there's the quiet one who doesn't know how to talk, who was hired clearly for the brains. Yep. And you do these like personality tests. It's actually very interesting. Deloitte has its own personality test that it's created. Wow. And there's four different types. I hope I can remember them. There's the guardian who like is the guardian of the data. A lot of the people in audit become, they care become about guardians. numbers, details. Driver is a leader and like struggles to work with people. There's an integrator mm -hmm. who's like, I want everyone to have a voice. And right. then there's a pioneer who's like the entrepreneurial. I want to try new things. And you're normally a blend of like two of them. Yep. I was of course, hundred percent pioneer, which is the <laughs> last thing that Deloitte wants to hear. <laughs> Deloitte just wants you to represent the same deck that they've yeah. done for multiple clients before. It's right. worked, we've implemented it. We don't want your new ideas here. Yes, we don't us. need new ideas. I think we got here just fine without you. Yeah, exactly. So. And I'm coming in with my Silicon Valley entrepreneurial yeah. spirit. I went um, to Notre Dame, God damn it. Literally. So <laughs> anyway, this first day for me was like, meeting so many peers who are exactly at my level, my age. And then they're, are they all gonna just fan out back to other places in the US and I'll you'll never, never see, them see them again? Yeah, yeah. I make best friends on, yeah. you know, I have my new, my Deloitte University best friend who I don't even remember her name anymore, but right. we were tied at the hip, couldn't go anywhere. We hope she's anywhere. doing well though. I really do hope she's doing yeah. well. And like, it's just this, it's like you're in college again, except yeah you're never going to see them and right. you're trying hard. You don't, the case doesn't matter. Nothing matters. It's all, it's a fake world. Yeah. Yeah. And then they're like, have fun going to the San Francisco office and being staffed in New Jersey. Right. Have fun flying every Sunday. Right. Hope you like Marriott points. I do by the <laughs> which way, which Ross loves. <laughs> I love Marriott points. They don't so, love me loving Marriott points, but no. I love it because I tell it how it is. But I, do you remember being nervous? I remember being I was nervous. Super nervous. I, you know, wake up before my alarm clock. It's like, damn, yeah. what am I going to wear? What's my statement? I actually wasn't nervous with my peers because I love just hanging out with people. I feel yeah. like I'm a cool kid. I can- You're Cool cat. You went to state school, dog. Yeah, dude, I didn't know. <laughs> like, like, I'm a state I, school chick. Like I can just <laughs> hang out with anyone and I can party with the best yeah. of them. Like yeah. I love that. But then when you get on client site, and Everything you're changes. with these, you know, managers and people who don't care about you, don't value what you have to say. You're the youngest. You you don't have any friends anymore. Right. Because they only put one consultant on each project. They don't need a team of consult unless you're on a huge like implementation. So you're bottom of the totem pole. But you're bottom and you don't have any friends. And then yeah. you're like, where's Toy University with my free skinny pop popcorn? Right. Now I'm alone and I I don't know what How to do. How do you relate to what was your what was your boss's name? Srinivas. Srinivas and his eight kids and Yeah. Srini's just in a different phase of life. Srini actually told me that, I revealed this in an early episode for all you early motorheads, sorry for repeating it, but he was in an arranged marriage and he hadn't met her yet. She was yeah, in India. Right. And Srini revealed to me in the middle of Missouri, this was on my internship, that he he didn't know if he loved her. They'd only talked on the phone a few times and he was going back for his wedding to India. Right. And I was like, Srini, I can't relate to this at all. Holiday Inn in Missouri is a hell of a place to have that combo. We were on our way to Orange Theory, which was obviously an hour away. <laughs> it's the closest workout class. <laughs> I'm in the front seat like, God, man. absolutely jacked for his wedding. Feels like you're I stuck get. between a rock and a hard place, Rini. Really. Yeah. My friends still crack up at that. You're I'm like, like, how is he doing? You know, it's funny, like Deloitte University didn't prep us for this case. No, this is- A <laughs> lot of cases, but not this one. Not this you know, one, this Srini is boss. actually a little outside. But again, I can talk to anyone. I don't yeah. care. I had a great time, but yeah. it is just like- it's scary and consulting. You don't know how it works. You're drinking from a fire hose. Yeah, I mean, the hardest thing is building your your new brand. Right? Yeah. If you came from another job, you had your brand, you know, you knew a lot of people and like that's easily the most difficult part about switching jobs. And day one is where that all starts. So first impressions, they obviously matter, but they'll evolve over time. That's, thank God for people like me who don't put out the best first impression. But I definitely felt a lot of anxiety, definitely felt like I just want to get to work. Like I, I don't love the whole, let's, I know it's useful and bringing everybody together because 
and then like the trainings. I'm just like, I just want to go do my job. I just want to like, I know, but it's so get important. Here. No, I, it is. I'm, it is. I'm the exact same as you. And that's, that's why I'm, I'm driver pioneer, like driver, leave everyone in my dust and <laughs> pioneer, bring just, my idea to the top. Yeah. Like I can't, and it's horrible. You need to learn how to work with a team. No, to totally. And it's like, it's good bonding. Yeah. Like a lot, like some of those folks are like still my best friends. I'm going to one of their wedding. I'm going to Tyler's wedding tomorrow. Oh, no way. Tomorrow, my tra my Travis. I'm going to his to his wedding tomorrow in Hawaii, which will be super fun. There'll be a bunch of other glass door people there. Get, like we just did a reunion, a ten year glass wasted. door reunion. Yeah, we got wasted in the city, and we're gonna do it again. Love this, that this, this weekend. So let's let's get into some tips, like actual. Yeah, and tips. You're, you'll come at it from kind of the sales POV. I'll come at it from like general corporate, yeah. just small fish in a big pond. Yep. What's your first tip? Day one, it's all about taking in information. So it's all about logging all the things that you learn. I One thing I would like to do, because in sales, you're demoing a lot of folks, you you want to find the best reps. And a lot of them are open floors, so you'll hear people on sales calls. But it's picking out those little sound bites from people who are good at what they do. Yeah. And be like, oh, I'm going to use that. And, There's no shame in And what is your, that. you're in a ramp period when you start? Is that what it's called? Yeah, exactly. You're in a ramp. So a lot of times, depending on the sales cycle, it'll change. But if it's a really technical product that takes a year to sell, like they'll give you 100% of quota attainment for like two quarters. Just so you can learn and take Just it so in you can and be learn. a like, like you don't need to close deals in those first two quarters. Yeah. And then like the third quarter, you'll have 50%. So you do need to hit 50% of what a typical quota is. And that will be 100%. And then like yep. the fourth quarter, you'll have full requirements to hit quota. Okay. Grant periods change depending on the company and the sales cycle. And, so and what I hear, and I don't know if you hear this in sales interviews, is like, what's your 30, 60, 90 plan when you start yeah. this company? That's definitely less common in sales. It's like, it's because you're, so, you're giving close a, a deal. Yeah. Close, close, close a, a deal. deal. Like close a deal and then close a lot more. Yeah. So yeah. ours is like, you know, in the first in, you, you come up with this BS of course. response when right. you're interviewing. It's like I, applying to schools. It's I, like, what do I want to be when I grow up? I don't know, dude. Yes. But let me make some story up for but you. But I do think it's important when you're starting out and to sort of bucket your time in that way and set mini goals for yourself. And these aren't like outside of sales, these are not closing deal goals. These right. are like, I want to meet X amount of people. Which is great. In you the first 30 days. Yep. And when you start fresh, you have the unique opportunity to be so naive and so vulnerable. You can put a coffee chat on anyone's calendar. You can go meet with someone on, on a different team from what you're working on because you're just curious and you're new. I was going to say, curi being really curious, asking a lot of questions feels annoying. You got to do it. And then once you're there for a year and, oh, shoot, I missed this whole networking window. And then someone asks you like, oh, it's so nice to meet you. How long have you been here? And you're like, a year. I've just kind of been sitting on my ass. Yeah. Like, I sit in the back corner over there. Yeah. It's grinding. like, it's like, go do it now when you have time. Yeah. You're, you're still training. You're doing all these things. So my tip would be meet as many people as you can in the beginning. Cause, yeah. Because you'll just start your day-to-day -day job. You'll just start getting more tasks and working and being trusted and more reliable. And like, yeah, you won't have time. Well, I think it's also like building off of that a little bit. It's like finding your work bestie to, to one, one that's like a mentor who's been there and then one who's from your hiring class where you commiserate. That's what, that's how Tyler and I got super close. We were just stressing about everything, talking about, dude, when are we going to finally close a deal? Like I'm talking to this company. They're like, I, could, oh. I could lead this team better than anyone. <laughs> that's yeah. like week two. Yeah, totally. We're going to happy hour and talking about how we could run the company better than everyone else. Obviously uh, you could be a CEO at 23. Right. But it's, you know, find your mentor, find someone who's willing to give you some time. Like, yes, it can be annoying. And it's like, being strategic about how you ask those folks for their time. Like they're trying to do a job and believe me, the last thing they want to do is like train you. Totally. You know, but there is a, don't be a nuisance, bring some don't value. Be a nuisance. Yeah. Don't be a nuisance. And uh, you know, I trying to think like, what is an actual strategic actionable way to do that? Yep. You could email them, you could ping them and be like, Hey, I'd love to set some time and like find a time that works for them. And rather than just like walking up to them and be like, Hey, We'd love to come pick your brain. Yeah. Like pick you know, your brain is so no, pick your please, don't, tough. please don't pick my brain. Please. In the same vein of networking, kind of knowing what's around you, I would take time to learn the org chart. It's very easy when you're in one function, let's say it's sales yeah. to just put your head down and like only know the sales folks, right. who's only who? know who's in there, like who's who in the broader network of this company. Yep. And who do you have to know in the leadership team? Know the C-suite very well. Like, don't be shocked by any name that you hear. You should know the leaders of your company across functions. Yeah. And so that's something that I, the job that I had when I first started was business continuity. And we would have to basically interview every single business function. So I got a very like broad sense for the company. I knew everything that was going on. Did they on. give you a scavenger hunt? Because we kind of had to do that. No, we did not get a scavenger we hunt. Had like a, sca a, sca a scavenger hunt was kind of like talked to certainly. Then they were in on the, you know, on it. So they knew people were going to come up to them and be like, find out what 
pro- the product does for blank, blank, blank. And the person's just like waiting up there for so funny. people to come ask them at some point in the first week. The engineer week. who's like, this is not my job. Yeah, literally. Yeah. The <laughs> IT manager who's like, yeah, you're going to break your laptop, t- laptop 10 times. And totally. Awesome. I'll, I'll deal with it. Uh, just bring it here. Yeah. Which kind of leads me to, to technology because technology is so important now in so many roles. Like in sales, you've got your outbound stuff. There's how to pull reports in Salesforce. There's a lot of best practices on certain reports that are really, really valuable. The way you lay out your dashboard, you know, for your activity metrics and so forth, there are a lot of best practices around that. And so mastering those things can make your job just so much easier. And it's a little bit of an investment up front and really annoying at times, but 100% pays off. Yeah, I think I often will try to just not learn a tool because I don't want to like, I, have I don't want to do it like that. I'll just do it manually. I'm, I'm better that way. I'll just be as slow as shit <laughs> yeah. and do it myself. Yeah. And it's like, no, Natalie, learn the tool. These tools are here to optimize your performance, yeah. even outside of sales, like learn the hacks around your work day. Your like, what, are, what is the tool that integrates all these things together? Do can you have Slack plugins? Right. Can you use Zapier? Like whatever you use and what's in your suite of tools, learn them, learn them. Super, super valuable. I mean, again, the other thing to remember is the first day, unless you are an idiot, is not the last day. Unless you make some career limiting choice. Yeah. It's, you're going to have time, but obviously there's still the stress. First day is going to be anxiety ridden. You're going to wonder who's who and it, it just give it time and be patient. Yes. And you, and just know that this time is so valuable because you will get so busy. You will. Like, I remember the feeling of just sitting there. I feel like that's a very common feeling. We, we think like, no one wants to train you. Right. Obviously you have your like onboarding and these HR tasks and whatever, but like you really have to take the initiative to fill those eight hours. I think when you're first starting. Yeah. One sales, like you're not allowed on the phone yet. No. Like, so what am I going to do? I'm twiddling my thumbs. No, learn a tool. Yeah. <laughs> Sit there, do the onboarding. Study the product. Get what your, are the value Get props? your stuff in order. What are people, yeah. What are the common things that you'll run into? Final tip. Ross and I have said this on this podcast before start a document or an, even a note in your phone that tracks your successes and the impact you're having on the company. You'll have these performance check-ins twice yep. a year and it'll come up faster than you can even imagine. You'll be like, wait, I just started yesterday. What do you mean I have a performance check-in? Yep. And if you don't have a little notes page with all the accolades and all the things you've done and the groups you've joined and all, no one's gonna care. Right. Only person who's going to remember is you write it down. It took me way too long to start a deal track, like an external deal tracker. Cause you keep it all in the CRM. It's all in Salesforce or whatever. But when you change companies, you lose that information. And I, you know, and I wanted to be able to go back future sales interviews, X, Y, Z. What are some crazy deal stories? What are some deals that I didn't expect were going to come in that did, you know, just having your resume of revenue closed, super interesting, super valuable. And honestly kind of fun to go back and look at and be like, Oh yeah, I remember that deal. Fuck. I hadn't thought about that in a while. I'm not even thinking about leaving the company. That's yeah. so true. Keep it on an external drive, baby. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Don't download stuff out of Salesforce that is often illegal. Yeah. So people will like try to take their contacts, track that on your own if you want to do that, but do not download stuff and take information that is often illegal and you will get sued. Great. So don't do that. So one red flag there. Anyway, day one, don't download all of your sales. <laughs> anyway, those are some of our tips for starting a new job. I'm sure there are plenty of other tips. If you have any motorheads, please submit them. Email be them to us. Be a humble, curious, genuine person and you're gonna be, it's gonna be all right. Be a good little dude and do that. Yep, please. Should we talk about first impressions at work? Yeah, what would we do? Here's how to make a good impression on the first day of a new job. Fight somebody, preferably in marketing. You'll win. Ross hates marketing. I just loathe them. Stalk your coworkers on social media. And then when you meet them, reveal an oddly personal fact that you found from your research. And then connect with them on LinkedIn, obviously. Of course, connect with all the coworkers (laughs) on LinkedIn, yes. Talk about your old company incessantly. You know my old company, we used to do it like that. Well, back when I was at Deloitte, me. People love to hear about old company Me actually right now. Yeah, Yeah. we, us like not being able to stop. Yeah. I can't, I hate the person that's like, well, actually we used to do it a certain way. Yeah. Well, great. We do it this way here. Cool. You're here now, dog. Awesome, Buster. Yeah. Fall in line. Use dry ice to create a smoke screen anytime you walk through a door. I feel like it's some strong intro music too on top of that. I will be doing that when I'm Elphaba for Halloween. Like I will be- We got a Halloween episode coming. There's a trail of smoke following. Yeah. I don't know what I'm going to dress up as, but I'm going to have to compete. So- I will look like a fugly witch. You better have some stage makeup on. I'm going to go as the Tin Man and spray my whole body metallic. You better. (laughs) I'm not going to do the Tin Man, but I'll figure something out. You (laughs) better. I'll figure something out. Okay. Send a company-wide email introducing yourself and bonus points if you include a bathing suit photo. 
There's nothing better than unsolicited company-wide email. I love, we used to joke about that happened at Glassdoor all the time. Hey guys. Patty Landis. Hey everyone, Um, I lost some hiking poles in the office like a couple <laughs> weeks ago, dead, dead serious. This Patty, happened. please. And we still joke about Patty and her pie hiking poles. We hope she found them. I hope she found we them. We hope she found them. One of you sales savages probably stole her freaking hiking <laughs> what poles. What were they doing here? I feel bad for her. I feel bad for Patty. <laughs> hiking poles, come on. Wear a gown with an incredibly long train. After all, this is your first day. Exactly. Let it's, them know. It's my day. Right. If right. anyone steps on it, And all the other snap. new hires are going to feel small. Small. Offer unsolicited advice to the leadership team. You've already been there for what, two hours? Yeah. I think you know how to run the company. You know how this place works. So. Send a phishing email to the other new hires. Set them back. Set them back. So you can get ahead. Yes. <laughs> Tr trick them into clicking a phishing email. Yes. Someone so didn't finish their compliance training. Oh. Yeah, no, I saw from the start, I saw that come in there and it was like the email address was a little fishy, even though it said like- And I just company. wanted to escalate this to you because I'm seeing it. Yeah, I'm seeing it. I feel like this, you know, a few people here could use some extra training. We're going to get into corporate confessions. Yep. We have a couple of boss specific ones. A couple corporate confessions. I'm going to start with this one submitted by C41T. They really didn't want us to know who they were. C41T. I told my boss that I was pregnant after three years of IVF and she replied, well, I guess congratulations if you wanted to be pregnant. Okay. I'm feeling supported. I'm feeling uplifted. Yep. I'm feeling welcomed in the workplace. Yep. I'm, I'm feeling, feeling like my struggle was recognized. Excited about bringing life into this world For and sure. overall just like really, really supported and happy. I don't know if it was the three years of IVF that um, would give it away that would make me happy that I was clearly going through a struggle here, but I don't know. I think I did want to be pregnant if that's what I was doing. I think that would be a goal of mine, yeah. personally. We could do a whole episode on this. I have mainly female followers and a lot of stories about just like straight up discrimination in the workplace for being pregnant. Like yep. you're really punished as a woman. 100%. For, you know, bringing a life into this world. 100%. Feels like there's nothing we can do about it. And I feel like when I have a kid, I am going to be the face of the you're gonna be the face of corporate pregnancy corporate pregnancy yep. like i just you have to be supportive of those around you yeah look i'm also i don't get super gassed up about like people announcing that they're pregnant like i have a hard time being like congratulations because like I, I it's not something that fires me up yeah totally. but i'll fake it totally you gotta i'll fake, fake it, it. And i'll move on yeah becca's like you're an actor dog you better act you better act and i'm like well that's my toughest gig yet Totally. Toughest gig yet. Congrats on the sex. It's dope. Can't wait till you're acting for 18 years with your own son. Yeah, I know. Oh, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to be 100% a hypocrite. 100%. You are going to you are going to put a backwards hat on that son. so fast. You are going to love so that fast. little dude. Timmy was on his skateboard this year. It's going to be me holding him. He's so cute. He's, he's Oh my God, a little, he's like a little potato, potato with a stupid face. Okay. So you're going to love it, okay, but love yes, it. if this your is coworkers, up. this is effed up. Yeah. If you're especially woman to woman, really? Come on. Yeah. It's always the freaking just tearing each other down. Tearing each other down. Yeah. Dudes will do it behind your back at least. Literally. <laughs> Lift each other up. I mean, come on. All right. And congrats on your pregnancy. Yeah, congrats. I'm stoked for you. Three years. That's a grind. That's a battle. That so is a grind. I'm glad it's happened for you. We're happy for you. All right. This one is submitted by the Sass Slinging Slasher, which is a great, great name. We love, we love that. I hated my last manager. I was the top rep and he still felt the need to mansplain to me all the time. I used to show up to my one-on-ones 10 minutes early just to make all the other seats in the room shorter than my chair. That's Stop hilarious. Stop it. That's hilarious. My manager would get super flushed when he sat down and get embarrassed. It was my favorite microfeminism move. First of all, I love these corporate confessions. That's fucking hilarious. That is hilarious. You That's would go in 10 do. minutes early and make the, today we went into the conference room and yep. Ross's chair was about a foot shorter than mine and he's fidgeting with it. He's like, oh God, grunting. I'm sitting, I'm already deep into work. Yeah. I'm starting, I'm, I'm on my way. You know what? I can't do it. He throws the chair to the side, bring, brings another chair uh -huh. around, sits. I'm like, okay, are you done? You little fucking whiny baby. Yeah. Well, I was Can like, we I, get started. I was like, I don't like looking up at you. I'm sorry. You're a little dude. <laughs> I'm sorry, you're a little As dude a short today. King, I'm a little sensitive. Oh, self-identified short king. Yeah. Do you ever meet someone and they're like, God, you're shorter in person? Yes. I Because I meet everyone and they say, you're I, a monster. You're so much taller. I'm not even short. I'm 5'11". That's not even short, but every sales dude is 6'3". I swear, I got Dreamforce. I'm just tiny. The corporate bro brand is 6'5", at least. At least. Oh, yeah. So 5'11 is just extremely disappointing. I mean, I'll get I'll get people being like, you were either going to be like 5'1 or 6'7". Totally. There's no in between. And I'm like, I am incredibly average. I actually will take that back. 
people have said I'm actually shorter in person because I have such a big personality that you think I'm gonna be a six it. foot tall woman. Camera and then, makes you bigger too. And then when I'm five six, it's like, oh, she's a, she's oh. little. I'm like, yeah, she's just like us. I am just a baby. <laughs> uh, make the chair shorter in your That's office so if good. you are feeling like you need to make a micro feminist move. Yeah, love and, that. or sit at the head of the table. Just take the head of the table before they get there. Totally, I love that too. I, I will do that. that. I will do that a lot. I was not expecting the slashing sasher to be the sasling and slasher to the, be the sasling slasher to be beast. a micro fem beast. And I freaking <laughs> love you. I love it too. Okay, let's get into promoted or demoted. Yeah, yep, promoted demoted. I will kick us off. Sending voice memos to your coworkers via Teams or Slack. Shut up. Shut up. Don't do that. Don't you dare. I'm stressed out. Put it in writing. I don't have time to listen to you. I'm on calls all day. Yeah. I'm filming myself. I'm doing stuff. Right. Do not send me a voice memo. Yeah. Annie and I've had discussions about it. She does that. And she'll send me, send me a minute and a half long voicemail and I'll respond, I'll wait. And then she'll yeah. send me, sorry, I know I, 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 I'll, I'll put it in writing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have time. She loves her job. And the funny, <laughs> she loves her job. She's so happy. The funniest thing about voice memos, and this is more between friends. So if this, if this permeates into the workplace, we I can't stand it. We voice memo each other though, to be, to be fair. We but do it's, voice it's memo. the voice memo that's, hey, <clears throat> is that a flat? Oh gosh, yeah. wait, I- what was I going to say? Okay. I'm in my car. I'm driving. So can you hear me? Okay. Is this even working? Anyway, I saw him and I was like, oh wait, hang on. I have to do this. Shut up Get and tell me. to the point. Why am I listening to this? It's been 30 seconds Why of you doing you nothing. Why didn't you just delete this and restart? Restart. Please. Restart. The Brutal. The funniest voice memos are. When you laugh, when you have to like. The, the funniest voice memos and or videos. Yeah. Or when you're responding with a laugh and you realize it's not recording. So that's. <laughs> 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 oh, that was so funny. Oh, fuck. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Wait, it didn't start yet. Okay. Restart. <laughs> oh, that is so fun. Yep. Oh my God. It stopped again. You say you make a mistake. You gotta run. <laughs> it's like, and then, then I'm you just have like, to show up with the same energy face, every right, time. Face. I'm giving you some cry faces. I'm going to type it out. I can't that do point. it. I can't. Sending, sending voice memos to your coworkers. Demoted. 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 Promoted or demoted. Laminated eyebrows. You tell me. I'm still, I'm still deciding. They look good. Like I, I wouldn't, I didn't sit here like- Do I look like Madam Frost? <laughs> no, 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 no. They look good. I, you know, like I don't think other, I, I saw the story when they were in their max, like full lamination phase. You told me that in the car this morning. You were scared. I was scared. You might have, you might have had but to de demote no, I, me as your co -host. I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know. Yeah. I'm also a dude who was very just like oblivious to stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, Matt was like, they look sick. I'm like, what do you mean sick? <laughs> Babe, I'm that your, is not how we I'm describe- I'm your girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> Babe, those are fucking sick. Okay, I'm cutting off all my eyebrows and bleaching yeah. them blonde. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> all right, um, promoted, demoted, taking a new hire under your wing. I love going under someone's wing. I love mentorship. I love, when someone, I love when someone says, welcome to my office, and yeah. they open up their coat and I just slither in and give a hug. I'm just, I'm, a, I'm, I'm so just safe. A, I'm a little safe little baby. I'm a little worm. <laughs> um, I love taking promote under your new wing. Promote it. Absolutely. You promote. have to. And having just that mentor. Give back. Give back. Nothing old heads love like more than like a mentee. mentorship. Yeah. yeah. Doing some mentorship stuff. Promoted or demoted horror movies. Demoted. I get scared. I feel like you love horror movies. I love. You love I get scared. I love a twisted psychological thriller. I am clutching the pillow. I'm in the fetal position. It's like in the corner of the couch. Like I can, oh, oh, it's that sound. It's the horror movie sound. Wait, is it happening? When's is it the happening? Jump scare? Is it happening? When's the jump scare? Have you watched Monsters? You don't watch TV. I don't watch TV. Why don't you watch TV? Like I'm a video I'm, game guy. Yeah, you're just too busy gaming. I want to game with the boys. How, how many nights a week do you game? Probably four. Okay. Does Becca have rules on your gaming? No, because she goes, she goes and watches like reality TV. Got it. Good partnership. I mean, I can't, I can't game if I have work to do. She's like, you gotta do all these things. And I'm like, can I go now? Please, can Please, I game? Please, can I game? The boys already booted up, they're waiting for me. And she's like, you better get the, I asked you to do two things. How many did you have to do? Zero. Uh, okay, I was going to, I, I can still do them tonight. I love the relationship between us and our managers, yours, <laughs> yours being your wife. Um, but Annie, like Matt, I sent her a voice memo, of course, cause I can do it, she can't. Yeah. And I was like, hey, um, just wondering if I could get an extension on the uh, the video for Grind Espresso that I was gonna give you tonight. <laughs> I actually need till tomorrow. And I'm like, I'm like requesting an extension from, from Annie. From Annie. From <laughs> and Annie. Annie responds, fine, period. Fine, fine, <laughs> fine, yeah. Oh, oh God, I was stressed God. out about that. Now I can go game with my boys. Yeah. As a quick aside, uh, Nat and I, our travel schedules are not going to line up for a minute. I'm gonna be doing an episode with Becca 
on like the business of relationships. And so if anyone has motorheads have questions about what it's like to work with your wife or even who the hell she is, um, please send them anytime DM them to us or whatever. I think this is going to be earth shattering. No one's ever seen your wife or brand manager. It's actually gonna be me in a wig in the other chair and I'm yeah, going to splice it together. You're bouncing back and forth. <laughs> <laughs> we only do coverage cameras. Oh my gosh. No, I'm excited for that. Um, I think you guys have a lot to say and you've been in a relationship super long. I think yeah. people don't know that. Yeah. Like you've dated we since got a high story. school. Yeah. Kind of crazy. I'm excited to, for you to, you to drop that. Horror movies are promoted for me. Should we get They're demoted it? for me. They're scary. Yeah. I love, I love being scared. That was a quick promo demo. Let's do dear demoted. Get you guys out of here after we do some CTAs and shout some people out. Cause we got some shout outs today too. All the people want is their gift of time back. And yep. we, we're we gonna, will not give it to We're going to make you wait. <laughs> yep, you're going to wait. This is going to be a 90 minute episode. Sorry about it. Sorry about it. Sorry, okay. Dog. Dear demoted. How do you deal with coworkers who get easily stressed? I have one who's lovely and good at their job. However, whenever they have a lot on their plate or they're gearing up slash returning from PTO, they're super stressed and everyone feels like they need to walk on eggshells around them. They can be a little snippy or short with fellow coworkers. We all know not to take it personally, but it still isn't pleasant to be around. Any suggestions on how not to let this affect my mood? Thanks. Any thoughts on this? I would love to hear your thoughts on this. I'm someone who loves to make everything a joke. Same. And I will lead with humor on that one. And I'll be like, dog, like you good? Like we good? Like, just so you know, I love you. I love you. Yeah. So we're good. And by the way, none of this matters. So I wouldn't even sweat it at all. Totally. I just devalue everything. Devalue everything. And like, it does take a little humor to lighten it up a bit. Yeah. I think it's also really hard as women to, I'll speak from my POV on this. This is definitely a difference. To confront people on emotion because like, and I have a all woman team. My, <laughs> I'm proud to say, you are my a woman owned business. My financial advisor is a woman. My accountant is a woman. Mm -hmm. Annie is a woman. I'm a woman. Our part-time newsletter copywriter is a woman. I do not hire men. No. <laughs> <laughs> I hate them. And no, but I'm very proud to say I'm a woman owned and all female teams. Woman so run business. Woman yeah, run business. It. And we have to, I think it's a superpower of all women that we like are able to tap into emotion and apply it to a business setting. I think also it gets really hard when we're stressed, we're going through personal things, especially with Annie and I, we're so close. It's two of us every day together in the yep. same room. She's like a sister to me, like a friend, like, and she's also my brand manager. And it's a very tense relationship sometimes because we're so close. And I think with stress, it's so important to, as the person who is stressed, take ownership of that. Be like, I'm so sorry, I'm stressed bring light to it. Sorry if I'm walking around with my head down. It has nothing to do with you. Yep. And also don't take your stress out on others around you in the workplace. Like you went on PTO. It's going to be tough when you get back. That's how PTO works. That's the price you pay. You have to just own that and not let it impact others because then you're hurting your team. Yeah. And I mean, this is someone like if it's a subordinate, like I would just have a talk with them like, yo, I love how much you care about this job. Yeah. At the end of the day, none of it's life and death. Like, I know you're stressed. It's all good. We're all stressed. And and I think it's important, you know? like, we'll talk about work-life balance. And as a manager, like you're saying, is there too much on your plate? Like, yeah. Annie and I constantly have reshuffling conversations. Like, please let me take some off. You're doing too much. You're overworked. Like, yeah. it is important as a manager to check in and ask how they're doing. And if you're actually truly stressed and you're really struggling, you shouldn't hate your job every day you're showing up. Yeah. And I think, like, the worst thing you can do is nothing. You know, yeah. like, otherwise you're just going to start to resent As the outsider as the outsider. Or as the stress, yeah. Well, both. Like, you know, I, I don't think that person who's stressed wants it to feel like it's affecting other people. Like, that's not their intent. Mm -hmm. It just happens to be coming off that way. Like, intent and impact are two different things often. And it's like, yo, when you do this, it's making us feel like yeah. that. Like, I know that's not your intent, but, like, that's what's going on. So, like, what's, what's good, dog? Like, how can I help? Totally. You know? And I'll speak for myself. Sometimes I'm like, I am just in a bad mood. And that's I, the other thing. Just If you are in a bad mood and, and like, you're salty as shit, like, Say it. Say it, and it's okay. And like from the, from two self deprecators here, it's such a good protection and defense mechanism to own it before someone else yeah. talks about you. Yeah. You can't talk about us behind our backs because we're already taking the joke right out of your mouth. Right. Like, oh god, big old bitch coming in. Me, me to Annie. Back like, and I call it LB mode, little bitch mode. Yeah. She's like, you need to be an LB right now. I'm like, yeah, I need ten minutes to be a little LB. I love you. I hate you. And right then, now, and I hate everything. Okay. I'm going to be a little B right now. Because I'm going to game with the boys. Yeah. And I don't I want to game and you said I couldn't. I don't want to do this. Um, no. So it's important <laughs> to be self-aware. And I it think is. if you're stressed at your workplace, voicing it is okay. Yep. So I would have the conversation. How do I not let it, not let it affect your mood? Talk to them. Yep. I'm going to read a quick review. This one's short and sweet. This is from Danny Bryan. 
Two first names, always suspicious. But this is called Adderall-induced therapy, which naturally that's why we picked it. Perfect listen for that awkward transition from your first sip of coffee to when the Adderall kicks in. Perfect therapy for any sales professionals. Keep up the good work. Thank you, Danny Bryan. Thanks, Danny Bryan. Thank you for appreciate this. We super appreciate. Super, super appreciate. All right, we got shout outs. Yes. Let's run through them real quick. Do you want to kick us off with the first one? Yes. Shout out to Jasper. Happy birthday, my guy. Thanks for being a motorhead. Birthday was on October 12th. Not sure when this is coming out, but- Happy birthday. Happy birthday. We've had that shit circled on our calendars for weeks, so yep. get it, Jaspi. All right, shout out to Jennifer for closing two six-figure deals this month and tracking Strong to Prez Club. Okay, Prez. We yeah, we love a sales savage. This one's timely. Congrats to May for starting her first day of work. We love you from May's parents. Parents on the Talk on the, about on the, the, the multi-generational motorhead community. Wow. That's that's kind of tight. Okay. I want to call out Jason for being such a great mentor and getting me ramped up from Sarah. Jason, we talked about mentorship earlier. I don't know how old you are, but you're awesome. You're awesome. Shout out to my work bestie, Amelia, who is already grinding so dang hard before I broke my shoulder in an ATV accident in May. She's been holding it down for me and I'm thankful for her from Stacy. ATVs are dangerous. Okay. Well done, Amelia. Good job. All right. Shout out to Mariah for being an absolute sales killer and putting the team on her back. This is from her big Manny, Nick. <laughs> big Manny, name Manny. Big Manny, name Manny. <laughs> big Manny. No, that's my name. Those are our shout outs. If you want to be shouted out on our podcast, please write us a email at contact at Demoted Podcast. Send us a DM yep. or click on our website. Yeah, you can go on our website. You can send us a DM. Anything and everything, short and sweet, we'll get it done. Now we have a few CTAs, obviously like, violently accost that like button, that subscribe button. Hold hit it, it on up YouTube, against the wall by its neck. Choke it out. Lift yeah, it up. Give it a kiss. And then give it a kiss. And give it a little and kiss let on it the down and, and say, down. sorry. Sorry I did that, but I just want to let you know. That was a little aggressive. Anyway. Anyway, that's how we treat like buttons and subscribe buttons out here. Show that subscribe button who's boss. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We have an ask. We are doing crazy client stories. Yeah. Salacious tales. We know you guys butter up your clients. Yeah, what do we you really do? We know your clients ask for a lot. They do. We know you make a lot of money too. Mm -hmm. How much are you making from your clients? Yeah. What are they doing? Yeah. So crazy deal stories, like with crazy clients, crazy I'm, consulting stories. I'm whining stories. and dining them. Yeah. Like, tell us the deets. Yeah. What happened? Did you guys go to the strip club? I know you guys love going to the strip club. Tell us. For brunch, obviously. Comment on Spotify. This yeah. is new. This is new. I don't know how it works, but I believe you can comment at the bottom of our episodes on Spotify. I'm an Apple podcast girly, so yeah. I'll leave that to I, you. I am, a, I am a Spotify guy, so I'm going to go make sure that happens myself. So that's, you know, only... 50 or 60 asks we have of you guys. We love you to Add death. Add it to your to-do list. We love you to death. Share it with your mama. And I guess- and Papa. And we'll see you next time on, on Demoted. Demoted.